<laughs> Hi, and welcome to Coach's Issues. I'm Coach Samuel Barclough, co-founder of the VA Titans. Tonight, we're going to be talking about basketball. From my perspective, from some of our coaches' perspectives, from some individuals that will be joining us' perspectives. Keywords perspective. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that we all got to keep in mind. Um, tonight, we're very fortunate and lucky to have our lovely Allison, co-founder of the VA Titans. Um, we will have us, um, Coach C, joining us tonight? Coach C will be joining us tonight. Okay, so we'll have him momentarily. But to discuss a little bit beforehand, this uh, channel was created for perspective, to allow perspectives to be uh, visualize, put in fruition, and that's what we're doing. We're going to enjoy the opportunity and, and do that. Um, I think most people will enjoy it, especially some of the surprises, some of the different people that will be stopping by just putting in their two cents and just, you know, offering that keyword perspective. You know, I get it. That's the format. Here's Coach Say. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you see us? Yeah, I see you guys. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Thought, have you seen Bad Boys for Life? Well, oh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm stupid. Um, how you doing, Corey? Have I seen Bad Boys for Life? I tried to watch it. How's everybody doing? What's up? Hmm? How's everybody doing? Family doing good? Everybody good? Everybody's good, man. Can't complain. Just trying to, you know, take it day by day. Okay. Get through this quarantine, you know, just definitely, definitely. one step at a time, man. That's what it is. That's what it is. I was saying yeah. as far, it was something related to Bad Boys for Light. When he had said, can we see? It was something that, like, in the movie, something happened. We had just saw it this week. I and remember. It, it, man, if you have not seen that movie, that movie is good. I, I, man, like I said, I started it. I never finished it. I fell asleep on it. I'm going to have to check it out now since y'all yeah. endorsing it. Ooh. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I did a little quick intro, you know, a little intro to our show, uh, part of the, the, the Titans TV network. Um, you know, this is uh, coaches, coaches' issues, you know. It, it, it's, it's perspective driven, you know, and perspective is a key word, you know, and, and that's what we, we try to embody and we try to, to, you know, extend to others, you know, you know, but, yeah. So, last night we premiered episode one for Titan TV, our first video out there. What did you guys think of that? I thought it was I thought it was nice, man. I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, just the way it was put together, it gave us a series of like instructional videos, you know, to give these kids something to do while they're at the house. Because I mean, every kid doesn't know how to train. You know what I'm saying? And um, so them videos gave, you know, nice little quick little tips on some things you could do at home playing basketball, you know. Stay ready to this quarantine zone, you know. Got to stay ready. I definitely agree. I feel like the, the idea is, my idea in general is to be untraditional. You know, traditional is there. You can seek that now. You get traditional right now. And that's yep. what we do. That's that's what it is. But there's somebody where that doesn't necessarily reach them. It doesn't fit them. It doesn't right. speak to them. You know, sometimes y'all, you know, people are so scared to to try to do something that can reach a few, maybe because of popularity, don't sway the the feelings behind the, the movement. But sometimes you got to do do things different. You know. So I think the the video was. Yep. Good. I think that it it it. It legitimately says what these kids do. These kids go outside, they play basketball. If they're lucky enough to have some adults or some people that can like tell them to do some directions, then they try to do it based on them directions. And yep. they try to do on the best of ability. That's what these yep. kids do. Not all these kids have um, organizations that got coaches that, that, that take the best of the best and drill them and try to like 
you know, and, and that's what a lot of these coaches run with. You know, they they and that's some of these coaches' issues. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of these coaches, you know, they get the best of the best, but they won't sit down and invest in their players, good or bad, and and figure out what they gotta do to get them better. Sometimes you gotta take your best player and stick them with some of the worst. Mm-hmm. To build upon certain things to to really make that player a real well rounded player. You right. know. And, you know, yeah. coach, you know the, the video, in my opinion, is about progression. So how do you guys think the COVID-19 world health pandemic and crisis and school ending, how do you think that's going to affect school teams next year? Well, physically is what's going to be the challenge. I just think point blank period because, I mean, people are not people are not too informed about how they can, you know, contract the COVID-19 because, I mean, it's so many different, it's so much information that's out there right now, you know, concerning it. So um, I think the challenge is going to be for the kids to be physical how they were before this happened, you know, because it's going to be a psychological thing. Like, you know, do I get close to people? Oh, what if somebody coughs on me or sneezes on me? Um, What does that mean? Because that's what everybody's worried about right now, you know, that's they're worried about, um, you know, because of the way things are put out. But I think, um, once everybody gets together and we all get back comfortable with each other again, I think everything will be okay. But I think that will be, you know, the first challenge. I mean, the kids have been removed from each other for, like, what, going on two months? You know, no physical contact, nothing. Everybody's just pretty much training on their own, you know. So it's going to be it's gonna be a different experience. It's, it's going to be an experience that's going to take um, some – you got to break down some. You gonna take down some barriers, man, to to get it back physical and get people comfortable. You know, that's 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 how I feel. I think it's definitely. A, I think you bring some good points, man. I ain't, I, you you covering the bases because it's realistic. You know, realistically, yeah. we gotta look at the the process. My, you know, you know, me as a father first. I would say that right. first, but. I look at the safety of the kids, you know, you know, I, I'm an essential worker. Yep. So they say that I'm somebody that needs to go to work and I went to work. I go to work, but at the same time, I think about daily coming home, giving something to the kids. If, if it's something like that, yep. so I think this new season with the COVID-19 and Scotty song, we definitely got to be safe, you know, keep the kids very <laughs> first, you know, so once it is safe, what what do you think the impact of all this is going to be on the kids' readiness level when it comes to tryouts and how much how much is in their own hands right now? And obviously, that's a big part of what putting out our some of our episodes is about. But like, how do we think it's going to impact their readiness? Um, the ones that really are focused and really want to train and, and get better with their craft. Um, I mean, we know some of those ones. They're, they're just going to be ready to get back to it. Um, some of the ones that get consumed by the situation and just, you know, waiting for it to end, you know, it's, it's going to take some work getting back, you know, because a lot of coaches, a lot of teams going to want get, to get the ball rolling and get back out there, you know. They, they, they want to get it going. So it's just about who has the fire and desire, pretty much. We'll see. Yeah. And they show up. Who had it, you know? Yeah. This is going <laughs> to test the kids right now. They get a good test right now. My yep. opinion, they, get a, they got a real, like, straight-up test that's going to show a lot of them, like, right now, instead of waiting to the yep. end. And it's like, yep. Something, you know, from afar, you're looking at it like, man. <laughs> Same hair, the same. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna have some. Uh, we're gonna have some surprises <laughs> when we get back to. It. We're gonna have some surprises. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. You know what's fun about it? Though? I don't even know if it's gonna be surprises. I think it's like we know this. You know, these yeah. kids. You want them to be dedicated. You want them to have something to look forward to, but they gotta really want it. Ah, you know? it's gonna be ready though. Oh, yeah, I'll stay ready. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm talking about the ones that's not in in, in that mindset yet, but I'll stay ready. I was yeah. working out. They doing they do right now, but there's a lot. Yes, that's not, and they just not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, is there a way that we can bring in a, another perspective? I was thinking to myself, um, Don, um, she actually saw the video, hopefully, and I uh, would actually like to know her perspective on the video. Just, okay, you see it, you watch it. Yeah. Can we bring Don? So I'll bring up, bring Don in. Don? <laughs> Hello. How are y'all? Good. How are you doing? Good. Quarantine. Quarantine. <laughs> yes. As we all are. So did you guys hear what happened to Zion Williamson? No, what happened? So his Nike high top split open in the middle of a game. Oh, yeah, he's with Duke. Wow. Uh-huh. Causing yeah. a knee injury. And Puma tweeted out that it wouldn't have happened if they he was <laughs> Puma. Well, that's, a, that's a great marketing scheme. Of course. Scheme. That's a great marketing scheme, I'll tell you that. But uh, <laughs> they give they give Zion too much money. He ain't, he ain't budging. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's Jordan Brown, right? He would never make it. He did get with Jordan, I think. Yeah, he's Jordan Brown. I think he, yeah, wherever he got getting that money. Yeah, getting that money. His first year, ain't nobody thinks he's going to stay out there his first year. Technically, he did it. Look, this is what I say about Puma, right? Puma is trying to come out with some athletic gear. They're trying. They're trying their hardest. And some of this stuff is, some of it's looking all right, you know? But Nike and Jordan have been at the top for a long time. And it's not even about how it looks. It's got to look like – He's, he's a heavy hold up. guy. He is a heavy guy. He's a big guy. A big like guy. Puma, their their stuff is not as sturdy as Jordan and Nike. Well, he had Nikes on when he uh split his shoe. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so what do we think about those types of endorsements and contracts? Should college players be getting paid? Should they be getting sponsored? Absolutely, college players should be getting paid. No question. Because. If you look up the numbers for how much <laughs> these colleges make off of sports. Should they be getting paid? Sure. Sure. I just, yeah. you know, I just, I just, I think that if that's the conversation, then I end it with, yes, they should be getting paid. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I would say this then. All right. So what can I do to go to college for, for free? And not to say that working out and playing the ball game that brings money to the college is 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 something that's not free. But what I'm saying is, what can you extend to the person who can't play ball? Because if if it's not a big deal that you get the education, if the education is not a big deal, because that's I look for what the value is on that, you know. And, and in my opinion, the 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 value of education is more than getting paid, supposedly. If that's what the idea of what I'm supposed to learn from college, you know, the education. I feel you. I feel you. So um, you're saying that but it's hard. To be the payment. I'm just saying, what are we valuing? Are we valuing? But it's hard. It's hard to tell an athlete not to value his craft that's going to get him to a million dollars. Like, I mean. But which one are you valuing higher, the education or the craft? Well, this is how I look at it, and this is my perspective because we come from our own, our own perspectives. I mean, if you have a craft that can make you millions of dollars, I mean, why not go get the millions of dollars and then get your education? Because that's what they're doing now. They're going ahead and getting the millions of dollars, and then they get educated, and then they start investing in other things. So, I mean, you got to think a lot of our athletes that's in basketball, a lot of them need money, like, right away. You know what I'm saying? So college is not going to pay them. I think you're right, but a lot of people need money right away, though. I feel like education is important because if your craft does not work out, you have to have the education behind it. Absolutely. You have, to have something to fall back on. Yeah, but you if, can't you're making, go in, if you're you can't. making money, though, you can and always I, get your education. I, I you you got to think, LeBron James, LeBron James didn't finish. But finish. everybody's not LeBron James. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a fact. That's a fact. Well, that's a fact. And the thing LeBron is, Jordan. you never know. You may go out there. You may get injured. You need your education. You need your education to fall back on because that your craft may not carry you. 
That's true. So but I if feel you, like education. If you make that quick three billion dollars, you can go ahead and go back to school. I get it, but <laughs> I mean, let me throw something else in there. Let me throw something else in there. How does COVID nineteen change this? Right. So we're hit with the pandemic. The world goes into crisis. The NBA shuts down. College sports shut down, and we've got essential workers. We got grocery stores. We got healthcare workers. We've got people picking up our trash. That you know, we've got. So we, our priorities have to be different for what our money's going into and what matters right now because of COVID. How does that change this discussion? Does it change this discussion? It does. It changes a whole lot. It changes 100%. <laughs> it changes so. a whole lot. Like I said, education is important because if you can't move forward with your craft, you have something to fall back on, especially in a situation that we're in now. Yeah. yeah, I think you know? the, I think the COVID made that point though. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. did. I didn't look at it like that. Like that's a good that's a good point because because right now they're at a standstill. Everything's at no a standstill. No sporting events. Nothing. But yeah. if you had an education and you got that degree before your craft, you can fall back on that degree and take care of your family until your craft builds up and you're back on track. But you got a point. Right now, you got yeah. a point there. A lot of yeah. dudes in the NBA left the NBA with a lot of money. Because of that crap, but couldn't keep that money. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. As, I, as, as what I do, like I always have that. Unless physically I can't do something, you know. And, and I, that crap, I just hold that so valuable. Like every time I work, I'm just like, man, are you kidding me? You know, because I'll be looking at my crap. I'm like, you know, your mindset of the value of that gives you. You know, even if you can jump real high, that's cool. But you go out there and break your leg, don't let it heal good. And that, shoot, it's like it reminds me of that the 150 Cent movie where he, um, he had some type of disease where he had cancer and he got real skinny. Yeah. And he was like playing football. And I and it was a movie I saw with both my sons. I said there was like you need to look at this. And he, you know, he had it all. Then he got real. He got sick, and he just slowly all these different pieces fell apart, you know, and it was like, well, what was really valuable? Because he lost his scholarship. So that lost his schooling and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if he had that, that's what he wanted, that schooling. Was yeah. like really, at the end, he was like, man, I ain't got schooling. So I, I think it's just, I think, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say they shouldn't get that money. If they if they could get that money, they need to get that money. But am I going to sit here and that money. Say, am I gonna sit here and be like, yo, Y'all, y'all need to be getting paid, man. And shoot, y'all getting this education for free in the dorm and this little statement, man. They ain't paying you. They're using your name on their jersey. They need to be paying you too. It's like, well, how about we don't take you then? Cool, you good, great. Go straight to NBA. I'm gonna take the the collegiate dude who's kind of good. I'm gonna take the Jeremy Lin. You know, I'm gonna take these people, and they're gonna probably do four years, and and it's probably gonna be what it is anyway. Because right now these kids are gonna do the one and done and go to the league anyway. That's what college is going to do anyway. College is going to take kids that get the, the right GPA and athleticism over the kid that's the height. Because they're going to go right to the NBA anyway. That's how it's changing. They're going to do that little G League thing that LaMelo doing right now. And the other boy that just signed up, he's going to skip college. It's two boys. I can't remember their name. But yeah. Well, yeah. Point guard, the, the point the point guard or whatever. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the shutdown, it's been almost two whole months now. And so have has everyone heard about the bubble plan? No. All right. So the NBA is talking about doing what – well, the NBA isn't necessarily officially talking about it, but a lot of people are proposing it. So ESPN is talking about it. It's on a lot of media. A bubble plan where the NBA – It would be all the athletes and then essential staff. So photographers, videographers, coach, like whoever they deem essential, that they're going to go to a certain city or campus and quarantine there. And so that they can reopen for there. Some people are talking about a soft season and some people are talking about going right to playoffs, but basically no fans and everyone's quarantined together. So it's like they're leaving wherever they are now and they go to co- collectively quarantine in the one city or on one campus. I mean, wow. I guess. <laughs> never heard, I mean, that's, uh, yeah. That's crazy. I don't know what to say. <laughs> like that's, yeah. wow. 
So, and what if the bubble gets compromised, right? Like, so the idea is that they can do this because they're going to go quarantine together, but they have to leave all their family. They have to leave their current quarantine families. You know, they have to leave all their families behind. They've got to pick somewhere to go. And all of the NBA or all of the playoff teams have to agree to do that. You know, I'll be totally honest. The owners are pushing for it. I'll be totally Mm -hmm. honest. And this sounds like maybe a perspective that just I can relate to and maybe some other people. But back when I was doing construction, back when I was doing electrical uh, construction and not uh, not, um, in a small capacity, but in a big capacity, sometimes we had to go out of town for work. Sometimes we had to go somewhere and it felt like we was on the bubble. It'd be a base or somewhere and be like, man, that's where you at, man. You can't go nowhere. You couldn't leave. You can't, it may have been too far. It may have been somewhere where you just couldn't leave. And, and I mean, that was, that's been a way of life for people in general. Sometimes you got to adapt and you got to do what you got to do. So that's what they got to do right now. And it's safe and we can keep something safe and that. We can have something, then that's what we need to do. So you're for the bubble. If that means we can have something and that's the safest thing, but if they got a safer alternative, I'm with the safer alternative. But Somebody's going to pop the bubble. Yeah, somebody is. <laughs> well, and so there's this, too. In order to do this, they have to be able to test them. So, like, right now the Orlando Magic got permission to, that they can test asymptomatic players, asymptomatic players, and they think that the um, Lakers and I want to say the Clippers, I can't remember the third team, but are going to be next. So what do we think about that, though? So they're going to get all these tests so that we can have basketball? But aren't we still hearing, at least on social media, doesn't it still appear that we're low in tests and that people need tests and can't get them? But we're going to give it to the so, NBA. So the, question is, the question is, is the juice, juice worth the squeeze? You know, <laughs> like, do we do all that or do we just cancel the season so we can have a good season? Like that right there is too, is too much. Like if it, if it takes all that to just, it's not worth it. Right, like they have to separate from their families. We have to pour the testing into the net. They're saying yeah, like, not going to do this unless much. there's enough tests. But we, I haven't heard anything about there being enough tests anywhere. Do you know how much these Lakers fans have been through? How <laughs> long this is taking? We have been through a lot. We are fine with this. Are uh, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, we're um, we fine with this. We mm. number one. We will be a number one seed. The way it looks, we wouldn't have to play Portland. We play Memphis. We trying to go. We trying to continue. Was that the Lake Show? Yeah, we trying to, you know, get <laughs> some work. The CBA agreement is supposed to change anyway. So, let me tell you something though. It's so wide open. We don't know who's gonna win it. Cause it's wide open. <laughs> they can get in there and get some reps. I know who will win it. They can get some reps. They well, get some imagine, reps. imagine the Clippers are like full. Like well, you know, looking good. It's y'all. That's going seven games. That's going seven games. No, I don't the Clippers. They. That's the thing they don't want us to do. You don't want the Lakers to do seven games. If anything, they want the Lakers to do a, a best out of five or something, something like that. You don't want seven because you give us seven. The Lakers nice though, but this is Kawhi is just a different animal in the playoffs, man. Hey, LeBron though. LeBron. <laughs> LeBron, this, LeBron's trying to make history right now. That's why he's, hey, that's why during the, during this whole pandemic, he's still working out hard. He really wants to win. He really wants he's to real hard. I yeah, said, he, really so he inspired me. I was like, man, y'all need to go out and work out. Son, this man in there working hard. He got the whips. Yo, he's not playing around. He, he hasn't even had a haircut. He's just working out with no haircut. <laughs> he looks like he's been locked up. <laughs> He getting it in though, but yeah, that bubble, man, that bubble thing is that's tough. That's it is. Tough. It's 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 just that's not tough. the same either. No, it's that's like, not the same. That's taking all the feel out of the game. It is. Love. Might as well wait till next season. That's what I would say. I agree. It's not really worth it. No. Maybe to them because <laughs> they missing out. They call it a bubble, huh? Yeah, a bubble plan. A bubble plan. Bubble. They trying to do a thing in Florida, Disney World. 
But just imagine playing basketball with like nobody in the stands. With no fans, no like fans. how's that motivating? That's like going how's to a Titans that? game and hear none of the moms or the dads yell at their kids, or, or like, nobody no. cheering you well, on. So what are they going to take it? So we were supposed to go see the Lakers play the Nuggets, and then we were supposed to go see the Lakers versus the Wizards at the end of March, right? And they send us an email that says the season's been postponed but not canceled. So they're not refunding any tickets yet. So what, whether it's a bubble plan or it's postponing the season, like what do these third party companies and the NBA, what do they need to do to, like the fans are going through this economic crisis, they're going through the world health crisis and we're be, still being told that it's just on hold. <laughs> and then we can't what they need it. to do is be honest with themselves and refund because it's, for one it's not safe mm -hmm. it's not going to be fun even if you can go because a lot of people aren't they're not going to events and things like that because they're scared they're still right. scared but we you still don't have distance in a bleacher <laughs> exactly how are you going to social distance in a bleacher but let's look at that from another perspective though if they don't play the season, that's a lot of money but, that they're going to miss out on. And that, like, we, that's why you need Woo! education. We talk about millions, I mean, millions. even with everything going on, it's people like, I can say for myself, like, I personally, and I work in healthcare, I don't even want to go to a, a doctor's appointment right now. I agree. I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go to do, you know, if something's going on. In my mind, I'm thinking I can wait until, you know, I can wait a little while. because I'm putting things off because it's just not safe. So, so with that being said, working. how do we get to a level of being normal? Like, that's, how? That's the question. How do we get to that level to be yeah, where we yeah. used to be, where everybody could, like, I don't, I think normal. it's going to take a while for that to come. It's going to take a while for us to go back to what we call normal. Mm -hmm. With everything going on, you know and something that happened in the world. It was real funny you say that about normal because we were sitting there, we were um waiting on some food to come out of Smash Burgers today. Yeah, and we were waiting in the parking lot, we we saw people in Michaels, cars were parked up by the curb, and then you had people standing in line waiting to go in because they were practicing social distancing and the amount of people. Yeah. In. So. We sitting there watching, and and then all of a sudden we just watching the door and stuff. So all of a sudden this lady just walked. She just <laughs> she just crispy. She crisply like walked in. She walked in with confidence. She evaded. Like mate, nobody was stopping her. <laughs> she was <laughs> handling the door, and apparently from what we had viewed, there were people waiting in the little lobby transition. So she got around them too, and she got in the store. So we was both amazed. We were sitting there like we looked at everybody in line, and one people, some people in the back were kind of looking around. We was like, and she walked way in front of, like the line was long. <laughs> long line. But meanwhile, what's everyone need so badly from from Michaels? I'm like, I'm sitting there <laughs> like, I'm is, saying, Michael's, uh, is Michael's a fabric store? Is that like an arts and crafts store? That's what we were store? talking about earlier. Yes. Oh, like man. What I'm saying was, You're in an arts and crafts store. If we were looking at like, dang, that was like normal. That's like regular. Like just walking in the store was regular, but the new mm -hmm. normal was go get in the back of that line and go sit there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's I'm normal? Huh? Lines and so, so masks. Lines everywhere. It's just like, oh my goodness. Like, that's not, I mean, that, that makes things, it's making things take longer, you know? Of course. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you go to, like, your drive throughs now, it's a line of cars. At, your like, banks. Your everything banks. Is everything a is a wait. You but, know? I mean, what can you mean? Like, we went to the bank the other day, and it was a couple that didn't have a car, and they had to walk behind the car as the cars pulled up to Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Talk to the top. The inside's closed. Inside's yeah. closed. Like, I, and I'm telling Don, like, what are they doing? She's like, oh, they're, they, they're going to pull some money out the bank. I'm like, yeah, they, they don't have Don't a you car. need to be in a car? She was like, you can't go good. with. So, because I've been hearing, like, even at places like Starbucks and things like that, people who don't have vehicles, what do you do? You can't walk inside. You have to stand in the line with the cars. What else do you, if you want it that bad, you have to wait. Oh, yeah. You want Starbucks bad if you walk I mean, in a drive-thru for I mean, it. You like it. 
at Love this it. point, it's a way of life. It's the COVID-19. You know, we got to learn how to make Starbucks coffee. That's just the solution. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody don't want to. That's just but if people have routines. There could have been an old lady that walks to Starbucks every day for her coffee and go inside. And now she got to stand in the drive through It's just, it's a way of life is what we have to get used to. No, what's, what's going on right now? Yeah. No, I, like, I like going inside. I like, yeah, really? I like going inside, giving my order. <laughs> <laughs> I like some of it. Some of it, though, I say I think that, like, the restaurants, I think some of them like it like this. Some, some of them, them are I, making more money. Some. Yeah. Hello. Some. Yeah, ooh, Chick-fil-A. Pizza, pizza place. <laughs> no, like, there's uh, a Papa pizza John's, pizza. their sales have went through the roof. I'm sure. Like everybody pizza. ordering pizza. Oh. There's a few restaurants who have gotten like social media attention from this and who are doing better now than they were doing before. That's crazy. Like, from that Facebook group, there's a Facebook group about local um, restaurants and takeout. And I think there's one place on the boulevard that they're, they used to just have kind of slow business and now they're booked every single day with orders. Wow. Wow. Well, I have a question. It's not exactly about basketball, but with everything going on, what do you? How do you guys feel about um, like small businesses? Being that people have had to go two months without haircuts, um, nails done, salons, and they realize that now they don't really need them. It's been so many people that have done their own hair, cut their hair, waxed did their own nails, do you feel like there would be a major comeback or do you feel like these people will suffer because now people know that they are able to do these things on their own for a cheaper price? That's a good point. Well, I think it's going to be kind of somewhere in the middle because, like, I, for one, can't pull the wax strip off myself. So that's something that I'm... <laughs> 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 Just personally, <laughs> but on the other you hand, pull it. You pull my it. nails are gone, and I'm kind of looking forward to growing my real nails out and getting them strong and healthy, and learning to paint them because that looks like that's that's what's available to me, and you, I don't mind saving the money from it. We don't need yeah, it. You know, I'm been, like, what am I looking at? Like. Hot because yes. all of us wearing our leggings because we don't need all these new clothes and all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just from looking at social media, is like people are doing, they're experimenting, they're realizing that, wow, I can do this on my own. Mm -hmm. It's cheaper. I don't need this. And it's like, why not? DIY. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it Everybody's is. DIY. Yeah. yeah. I think sure. it's going to hurt a lot of people. Yeah. At the same time, I kind of feel like we all just need to, because some people seem to just want this to be over, so they seem to have started acting like it's over just because they want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, but what I think really needs to happen is we just need to keep on doing what we're doing, staying home, quarantining, social distancing, and then when this is over, when this is over, we just need to kind of call it even, like, the whole ever the whole world went through this so we don't need to hold people to the debt that happened during this time or we just it's like well i feel like we need to treat it like we were on pause and someone push, pushes play when it's, yeah are doing it yeah so, i don't know how the economy is going to be after we really read back up and go back to normal if we ever do we will we're going to be positive. We're not going to go right. back to normal. We're going to go forward to what the new normal is because we can't come out of this and not learn any lessons. Like we have to go forward. Is yeah. Well, everybody, I will say this. I think tonight was a good episode. I think that um, we, we got more to come and, and it's going to be fun. And, yeah. Uh, Tonight we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna wrap up tonight's first episode. I uh, definitely appreciate Miss Don um, coming through tonight with her perspective. Keyword perspective. Keyword anyway, perspective. You know, definitely appreciate Coach C coming to hang out with us tonight. For sure. Miss Alice. Miss.
Coach Allison. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Well, we're going to get with y'all again next time. Um, uh, coaches, um, coaches Issues. Coach position. Have a great night. Y'all enjoy the rest of your night. All right, we yeah. All right, y'all. All right. Bye-bye.